All right, guys, today I came out by myself and I'm gonna scout this piece that I've hunted a little bit in the past, but the reason that I'm interested in going back and checking it out is I want a quick refresher. I think I'm gonna see some deer back in here. I know there's gonna be deer back in here because I've already jumped up by the parking lot and I'm running into deer sign about 150 yards from the road. You can hear the cars up there on the paved road. So I figure I'm gonna bump into more deer throughout this whole piece. My number one mission today is to remember exactly how this lays through here. It's just been a while, and I figure I'll probably try to come in here and hunt early season, especially if there's a lot of corn in this area. I'm gonna check out these fields that are bordering the public land, see what kind of crops are in there. The other reason I'm scouting this piece is I think it's a really cool piece to kind of explain our thought process as far as going in and stage hunting an area. This piece is long and narrow, and we're gonna just kind of go through the stages that we would actually go in here and hunt. So hopefully that'll show you guys a little bit of our thought process there. But I'm also gonna be looking for deer because I know there's gonna be a bunch in here. If I see deer feeding, I'm gonna just practice making stalks on them, see how close I can get, see what kind of footage I can get. I'm excited about this spot. It's really, really thick in here. And one of the first things that I realized is that all these trees up by the road, they're not very old have grown up a lot in just like two years. There's definitely deer bedding right here by the road this summer. I don't think they'll be there all year, but it's a good sign. It just kind of blocks deer off from the human access. I think it makes them feel pretty comfortable. This piece is generally really open, but it's also kind of wet down here. It's a pretty weird spot, honestly. I can't see it anywhere right now. This place is gonna be seriously wild. Oh my. No, I just went way up over my boots. I'm in like knee high water already. Whew. I guess I'll just keep going for it at this point. Already soaked. Well, one thing's for certain. There are not a lot of guys from Iowa gonna walk across that knee high water. I mean, it starts right there. You can see the road is up there by those barns. I mean, I know that's not very far, but it's knee high, as far away from the river as you can be and not go across onto the private hill. I doubt many guys are gonna be trudging through this crap. I'm not even close to the first spot that I would hunt. So this really changes the game. I've had a really wet year. And to be honest, it's throwing me off quite a bit. Finding beds though, that's a summer bed there. It kind of sucks walking through this stuff right now. I'm back here at some of the first isolated trees on a fence line, and you can see there's all this matted down grass around these trees. There's big buck droppings right here, really big. So there's definitely a lot of deer in here, and this year they're probably not gonna get very pressured, even more so than other years. So one of the first places that I'm excited about checking out is this little knoll. This is the first place that we would probably hunt if we were gonna come in here and hunt this area. The road is back over there, probably half a mile, six tenths of a mile, but it's all open grass and wetland all the way back to that first knoll. If there's any hunting pressure, the deer probably won't be back here, but when they can bed up on that high point and look all the way back across this open grass towards the road, they're gonna see any hunting pressure coming on the public land. Go up here, see what we can find kind of explain a little bit more of the vantage point from the spot that the deer are gonna have. Another thing that makes the spot interesting is as you start to change elevation and go up out of that bottom, you get a little bit more diversity. As you can see out here, it's all the same grassy vegetation, but you hit this elevation change and you start to get diversity. So this little drainage goes all the way down to that little high point up there. That's gonna be 
pretty effective as far as getting in close to this bedding area. If we think there's deer bedding in there, we can park the canoe down by that willow right down there, hop out and stay in this low ground, and then crawl up and be really close. It's kind of a unique way of getting in here, but I think it'll work. And as you can see, oh shit. If you get all the way down to the bottom, it's really deep. <laughs> but if you're down in here, you know, nothing's gonna be able to see you up there as long as you're being quiet or not. And then if you need to, you can get up here and crawl up to a tree or something, or just crawl up under a tree and set up. Now that we're up on this ridge, you can see there's this big oak tree here. There's a cedar, locust tree, and there's several other brushy habitat types right on this elevation change. The hill starts to go up and it looks over this low ground. Once you're up here on top, you're gonna get the diversity that the deer need. They may bed down towards the water in some situations, they may bed here in some situations, but regardless of where they're bedding, we can assume this is gonna be some sort of staging area. If they're coming from areas where there's no diversity and they hit a patch of diversity, this is the place that they're gonna stage up. This is the first place the deer can stop out of their bed if they're bedding down by that water. I also think they're gonna bed in this area like this bed right here, to where they can lay here and watch all the way back down towards the road. It's a long way over there, so if somebody starts hunting their way this way, the deer's gonna know, bound over the hill, and be at the next bedding area. How do we hunt this? On a year that we can get that canoe down that creek, that's how we're gonna do it. We're gonna canoe in, and go down that little ditch, potentially, or if we can't paddle down the creek, we're probably just gonna crawl through that grass for as long as we have to to get as close to this thing as possible. If we believe there's a buck here, we're gonna do whatever it takes to get into this spot. And obviously you saw how tall that grass is as I'm walking through it. The deer aren't gonna see you if you play your cards right and you crawl through that stuff. So we would find a way to get within this staging area, I guess. But if it didn't work, the next thing we would do is just bounce to the next potential bedding area. We talk a lot about how deer never really leave. In this situation, you know, the buck may move from this specific bedding area, but he's not going to go a really long way away. He's probably just going to go to the next bedding area that's a couple hundred yards up. So we'll come in here, we'll hunt this area, we'll be aggressive, we'll go into the hunt with a ton of confidence, but if we mess anything up, we know we're not out of the game for this piece. Just one thing to keep in mind, don't worry too much about being aggressive because once you start learning these bedding areas, you start to really understand how the deer are bedding based off of hunting pressure and how they're just avoiding that as the season progresses. Big buck, big buck, big buck. Totally just jumped. There he goes, there he goes. Oh, give me a chance. Dang it, dude. I don't know if I got anything of that thing. <laughs> I totally messed that up, I think. I might have got some audio of him blowing. Maybe some audio of him running across the water, but I just crested the hill and I got excited because I saw a corn planted out there, which is something that I really, really was hoping for. And as soon as I got up here, looked at the corn, I realized I was standing in a couple big beds. And here's one right here, two of them. One there. Another there. And I was standing here, and I could see that water down the field, and I heard something splashing in it. So I took off sprinting over here to the fence, and the buck was running across the water. I could just see the water rippling behind him. And I saw a big frame. It looked like a pretty good buck. It's unfortunate that I messed up and didn't get any footage of him, but what we can learn from that is they are betting currently even on this hill. So early season, there's a chance they're gonna be betting on this hill. If they're not, we can expect that they're in the next betting area down in that bottom. As you can tell, it's super wet down in there. That field is completely flooded out. They didn't get corn and a huge section of it. What that means for us is this area is even more 
concealed because it's got corn all around it. And there's probably not a lot of people coming in from the road down there just because it's so wet. Like it's really, really deep water down in there. I'm sure if you're closer to the river, you're more up to your chest. But the whole bottom is completely flooded. So that's just making it really tough for people to access these areas. I wanna see what's down there. I wanna see if I can keep bumping into deer, see how far back in there I can get with as wet as it is. All right, on second thought, I got down here, started feeling ticks crawling all over me. It's super wet again. And it's a long way back to that next spot. I've got enough daylight that I can probably make it to the next piece of public land down the road or really hustle out of here. At the very least, I'm gonna show you guys what I see driving around the public land in this area. She's thinking about running. She's thinking I better get out of here. She is absolutely, I'm standing up. I'm gonna let her know my location. It's gonna be a stare down. I'll look at her. Come on now. Come on. Oh, there she goes, there she goes. Look at her. Look at her. Oh, she's gorgeous. Into the sunset. Awesome. Made it out of there alive. It sucked. It really does suck walking. There's tons of water down this bottom, and now that I'm driving over top of the bottom, I realize that it's really wet. I should have just came down there in the first place, but I guess you live and you learn. It's going to take a lot of effort to get into a spot like that, and I would assume that for the most part, a lot of guys aren't just diving right into a piece like that. That's probably a spot that I'll be as soon as season opens this year. Not messing around on it. I think it's got all the right things for a big buck to be in there. Obviously jumped one there now, but I think that's gonna last. With corn, high water, lack of access, it's gonna make for a fun early season down in there. But that's gonna do it for this video. It's been a pretty fun day. Thanks for watching. Pretty sure I just saw a real good buck. Her around real fast here. I don't think he's gonna move. He's actually on public land. Oh no, there he goes. Oh my god, there's a whole bunch of big bugs. On the left, it's for sure a mature buck. Oh, yeah. My goodness, dude. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah.
時代の